What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Allies of President Lai Qingde are jumping to his defense after he said Taiwan is older than China, and therefore China cannot be its motherland. He made the comments at an event over the weekend, drawing an angry response from opposition lawmakers, who called his words provocative. Louise Watt has more. President Lai Qingde hasn't been in the job for six months yet, but he's definitely not shying away from challenging China's view of Taiwan, particularly the notion that it's been part of China since ancient times. His latest comments to spark controversy came during a speech at a concert marking Taiwan's National Day. He said that the Republic of China, or ROC, Taiwan's official name, is older than communist China. Such comments have been criticized by opposition lawmakers who say they're provocative to China which sees Taiwan as its territory and could one day invade. But lawmakers from Lai's ruling party have defended him, saying he's simply using basic facts and logic to prove that the Republic of China-Taiwan is separate from Beijing. Ryan Wu and Louise Watt for Taiwan Plus. For more analysis on live speech, our reporter Tiffany Wong spoke to Chong Jia Yen, a political scientist at the National University of Singapore. Could you tell me first, where are Lai's comments coming from, and are they in line with previous president's statements? So Lai's comments really come from the very entangled history of Taiwan, uh, the Republic of China, and the People's Republic of China. It also brings up questions of what you think China is uh, or is not. So there is the view that the ROC, the Republic of China, uh, established in 1912, predates um, the People's Republic of China, established in 1949. Um, that is a historical fact. Um, I think uh, where Lai would be more similar to presidents, uh, really starting from uh, Li Denghui in the 90s, but um, including Mai Zhou, etc., uh, would be to insist on Taiwan and so the Republic of China, Taiwan, being uh, distinct and uh, separate, not subordinate to the People's Republic of China. There tends to be confusion over the sort of formal name Republic of China, Taiwan, and China. They, um, you know, China as a cultural and political entity, you know, it uh, pre-existed, you know, before the ROC and the PRC came about. There was a China. Um, it's just that the PRC today wants to claim that history. One of the concerns about Lai as president was that he might make provocative statements towards China. Would you consider this one of them? I don't think it's provocative, but I think there is there are two things going on. One is there is some confusion, um, and secondly, uh, there has been an ongoing effort to paint Lai as provocative and dangerous uh, by the PRC, but others as well. So where the confusion lies is I've seen a lot of the reporting uh, surrounding Lai's speech uh, saying that uh, Taiwan is, uh, it's, it's a statement about Taiwan sovereignty and uh, it's not um, and that Taiwan is not part of China, that he's rejecting China. So this gets to what I mentioned earlier about what you think China is. If you think China is exclusively the People's Republic of China, then by saying that Taiwan is not subordinate, I suppose one view would be to say, well, that's provocative to Beijing. But Beijing finds many things that they don't find consistent with their own narrative provocative. Now, these were just comments that he made leading up to Taiwan's National Day. When can we expect a reaction from Beijing? And do you think that he'll continue to make these sort of statements at the actual National Day speech? I think Lai will continue with these comments uh, because uh, they draw a line of consistency between himself uh, and Taiwan, and at least uh, to Ma Ying-jeou, right? This non-mutual subordination between the ROC and the PRC, um, this idea that Taiwan is a distinct um, entity, which um, you know has truth to it in the in so far as Beijing does not rule Taiwan, it is unable to impose its writ on Taiwan, right? So that that is an empirical fact. Now, um, to sort of 
draw that continuity also allows Lai to demonstrate that he is actually not being provocative. I think the bigger response will probably be to his um, double tenth National Day uh, speech uh, on on October tenth, right? And that's perhaps when we will see a more fully formed response from Beijing and um, efforts to sort of really shape the narrative. That was Chong Jia Yan from the National University of Singapore. Former President Tsai Ing-wen will reportedly travel overseas this week for the first time since leaving office, heading to the Czech Republic. Sources who spoke on condition of anonymity said Tsai is planning to deliver a speech at the Forum 2000 conference in Prague, an occasion to support democracy and human rights. It would be a sensitive trip for the former leader, who Beijing has repeatedly labeled a separatist. Tsai reportedly will spend eight days in the Czech Republic and two other countries in Europe. Tsai's office says it will make an official announcement when plans are confirmed. Taiwan's defense minister has confirmed there was a procedural flaw in buying pricey U.S.-made missiles in 2020. The sale amounting to over 560 million U.S. dollars was initially signed without proper authorization. The budget only later approved by the legislature. The minister was questioned on this discrepancy as well as the recent overcharge by U.S. defense giant RTX. Joyce Zeng was there. Taiwan's defense minister has come out to shed more light on a recent U.S. arms price gouging scandal in a confidential meeting with lawmakers, some of them asking whether it erodes Taiwan's all-important relationship with its largest arms supplier, the U.S. Defense Minister Wellington Ku had already previously stated that Taiwan will be paid back what it was overcharged by U.S. defense giant RTX, formerly known as Raytheon. And today, in the public portion of the briefing, the Defense Ministry affirming still strong U.S.-Taiwan ties, pointing to a recent fruitful defense conference in Philadelphia. But what we still don't know is just how much RTX overcharged Taiwan. There's been concerns about the multiple million-dollar price tags of RTX arms, like the Patriot missile and long-range early warning radars, which also take over a billion U.S. dollars to maintain. Pointing to potential co-production of military tech between the U.S. and Taiwan, opposition party lawmaker Ma Wenjun asked Ku whether Taiwan would be getting the short end of the stick in this partnership. We the worry among some lawmakers is that Taiwan will be taken advantage of. In this particular case, with RTX, Ku reminded that the contract is between Taiwan and the U.S., not Taiwan and RTX, putting the full responsibility on Washington to refund the full amount wrongfully taken from Taipei. Howard Zhang and Joyce Sen in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Rallies and vigils are being held across the world to mark the one-year anniversary of the October 7th attack on Israel that triggered the war in Gaza. From Tel Aviv and London to Paris and Berlin, thousands have gathered to remember the victims of the Hamas attack that left more than a thousand dead and hundreds of others taken hostage. In Jerusalem, there were renewed calls for Israel's government to negotiate the release of the remaining hostages. The day has also been marked with multiple pro-Palestinian rallies. The conflict has killed nearly 42,000 people in Gaza and displaced nearly all of the 2.3 million people there. Here in Taipei, rallies and vigils have also been held, with some calling on Taiwan's government to stop sales of arms components to Israel and the U.S. Twelve months on, the war between Israel and Hamas has only escalated, and fears are mounting of a wider conflict in the Middle East. Harel Hughes reports. One year after October 7th, kibbutz near Oz in southern Israel remains empty and in ruins. It was one of the first targets of Hamas militants when they crossed the border from Gaza, killing over 1,000 people and taking 250 hostage, 
in Israel's deadliest day ever. Something broke inside of me on October 7. I never believed this kind of cruelty and, and violence can later be justified as, as an act of freeing Palestine because I believed in freeing Palestine my entire life in two state solution. Israel's retaliation was swift, launching attacks on Gaza that have killed an estimated 42,000 Palestinians within the past year, leaving the enclave devastated and sparking a humanitarian crisis. The United Nations estimates 40 percent of the deaths in Gaza were children, including five-year-old Sally, killed in an Israeli airstrike just days after October 7th. <laughs> كنت متوقع إنه بعد المعاناة اللي شفناها في أولها بدايتها وسائل استشهاد سائل وهي في حضني كنا متوقعين إن الناس يعني العالم ينظروا لها نظرة شفقة نظرة إن الحرب تخلص يعني وهيك. One year later, Israeli leaders are facing accusations of genocide, and the conflict has now spread across Lebanon, Yemen, Syria, and Iran, with fears of all-out war on the horizon. Top diplomats are calling for diplomacy. We meet at a time of high tension, risk of escalation in the region is acute, and I know that we are all very much focused on that. Um, the best answer is diplomacy, and our coordinated efforts are vital to preventing further escalation and to paving the path to greater peace and stability. Meanwhile, kibbutz near Oz in Israel remains empty, and residents may never return, as the memory of the violence of that day and the months following is too much to bear. And in Gaza, the humanitarian situation remains dire, as Palestinians wait for a peace that seems further away than ever. Scott Huang and Harrell Hughes for Taiwan Plus. Israel has carried out its heaviest night of bombardment in Beirut since the latest round of hostilities began. Israeli military officials say they struck Hezbollah intelligence and munition storage facilities in the Lebanese capital. Authorities in Beirut say the strikes killed 23 people and wounded another 93. Hezbollah says it launched missiles into the Israeli city of Haifa in retaliation, injuring 10 people. Three major Taiwanese companies were targeted by cyber attacks in the last few days. Tech firms UMC and Wistron, as well as Formosa Petrochemical Corporation, saw their websites taken offline. All three were back online quickly and said no information was stolen. Taiwan's digital ministry last month said a pro-Russian hacking group launched attacks against 45 entities in Taiwan, including government agencies and financial firms. In those cases, the damage was also minimal, and most of the entities targeted quickly went back online. A rarely seen marine animal has washed up on Taiwan's southern shores right after a powerful typhoon slammed into the region late last week. Local Coast Guard officials and researchers rushed to a Tainan beach after receiving a report of stranded whales on Sunday. They found four pygmy killer whales, all with at least minor scrapes. Three were healthy enough to release back into the ocean, but they took one in to treat for severe sunburn. The rescuers are looking into whether Typhoon Krathen interfered with the animal's navigation. Pygmy killer whales are a type of dolphin. They resemble the much larger orca, also known as the killer whale. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally, join us for this sample of Paul McCartney's Got Back tour in Argentina. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time.